in this we are going to see the lateral ventricle lateral ventricle is present be beneath this septum pellucidum and uh, here you can see this beneath that only you have the septum pellucidum this is septum pellucidum and uh, this is the fornix septum pellucidum we have divided it's a divided part and inside only you have the fourth uh, the lateral ventricle and deep inside you have a big structure which is lying down is your caudate nucleus this is the head of the caudate nucleus this is the body of the caudate nucleus and the tail of the caudate nucleus is coming down and here you are seeing the uh, first part of the lateral ventricle this is called as anterior horn and mid central part or body this is called posterior horn and the down one is called inferior horn so here anterior horn, horn we have the boundaries inferiorly it is bounded by the rostrum and anteriorly genu and superiorly by the trunk of the corpus callosum and uh, medially by the septum pellucidum and laterally who is sitting there head of the caudate nucleus right head of the caudate nucleus is deep inside so these are the boundaries and the central portion central portion means this area so exactly this area the roof is formed by the trunk of the corpus callosum and uh, the medial wall as i said it is formed by the here septum pellucidum and the lateral wall or floor is formed from 1 2 3 4 5 we are going to see number 1 the caudate nucleus the body of the caudate nucleus number th 2 this is thalamus right so above the thalamus you have the blue color structure that is a vein that is called thalamostriate vein and this fiber is called stria terminalis so uh, this is called stria terminalis stria terminalis and thalamostriate vein so number one is body of the caudate nucleus number two is stria terminalis and thalamostriate vein number three is thalamus and you have the choroid plexus of course and next is number four is your this fornix okay so all these structures are lying in the floor so roof only one structure trunk and floor caudate nucleus thalamostriate vein stria terminalis fornix choroid plexus and thalamus all these things you have to write for the floor and medial wall only one structure that is your septum pellucidum and then next is your posterior horn posterior horn already i told you this is called calcar avis so calcarine sulcus calcarine sulcus it's in the deep the posterior horn this forms an elevation that is called calcar avis second thing from the splenium i, I said some fibers are going that is called forceps major the forceps major also they form a bulge over here so there are two bulges present inside the fourth ventricle that is called as calcar uh, the upper bulge is called bulb of the posterior horn that is produced by posterior uh, forceps major and the second bulge is called calcar avis which is produced by the calcarine sulcus so two bulges over and the last one is inferior inferior horn you have the i have already told you hippocampus is seen here so the uh, this is called collateral sulcus so the collateral sulcus deep inside they form an eminence called collateral eminence and the hippocampus is there so two projections in the inferior horn so that's all about the lateral ventricle so anterior horn central part posterior horn and the inferior horn is deep inside the inferior horn only what i said hippocampus so this area only you have your hippocampus right you can see you know hippocampus is there and then the roof of the fourth ventricle is what do you have the tail of the corpus color that uh, caudate nucleus comes and lies here tail of the color caudate nucleus so the tail is seen as well as the hippocampus is seen this is your hippocampus in some other good specimen i will show you the hippocampus that's about the lateral ventricle so two projections uh, in the posterior horn are forceps major that is called as bulb of the posterior horn mcq bulb of the posterior horn is formed by the forceps major forceps major is nothing but the fibers coming from the splenium this is the splenium this is a part of the corpus callosum and the uh, inferior horn you have two bulges one is the collateral eminence produced by the collateral sulcus this is the collateral sulcus the eminence produced sorry this one so collateral sulcus can you see this one is the collateral sulcus yes see can you see the choroid plexus these are the blood vessels present inside that see this is the collateral sulcus collateral sulcus that forms a collateral eminence this parahippocampal gyrus ends in the place called ancus deep inside only you have the 
can you see this bulge ah yeah lovely this is called as hippocampus can you see that hippocampus ends here so don't forget collateral eminence and hippocampus are the two bulges you could see inside the which horn inferior horn inferior horn of the lateral ventricle this what what i'm holding is the inferior part look at this you have turning it down and i'm showing you the inferior part my finger is present in the inferior horn so this is the inferior uh, the temporal gyrus here it's a collateral sulcus the eminence is formed by collateral eminence and you can see the hippocampus and the area where the parahippocampal hippocampus near the hippocampus this is called parahippocampal gyrus it ends in the area called uncus this is called uncus this big projection is called uncus this is the front area frontal lobe right frontal side this is olfactory bulb smell so the uncus is related to olfactory area and again i said the lateral sulcus which deep inside if you reflect the lateral sulcus there is an cortex which is submerged inside the lateral sulcus that is area called insular cortex this is also related to the olfaction so your olfactory stria is here it is related to the uncus hippocampus and the all insular area insular cortex so the uncus hippocampus is related to the emotions and sexual arousal that is a related area that's all